Chase D3-1 Hunting Ground Part 1 A warm welcome. Hi, hello, and welcome to my first video of Text of Cathona, a series of audiobooks uploaded onto YouTube by me, Terence Polino. This is a story that mixes the Cthulhu mythos, the works of H.P. Lovecraft, but also includes some elements from the writings of Charles Strauss and Brian Lumley, with Japanese anime and sci-fi action shows like Charlie's Angels and Power Rangers. This is the first time I've ever done anything like this, and I'm not entirely sure how this will turn out for all of you listening or reading to all of this. But I hope you all enjoy it. And before any of you thinks otherwise, this is all a work of fiction. It is not, was never, and never will be true. It's the work of the imagination of the author, and of the various other writers that inspired him. A quick self-promotion. Before we continue, if you enjoyed my content so far, please feel free to do the following. Subscribe to my channel, hit the bell for notifications, like my videos, share my videos. If you have any complaints or suggestions, please type it down below in the comments section, and let's see where it goes. Case D3-1 Hunting Ground Mission Type D+, Units Slash Personnel Team 3, Squad 10, Company 7, Philippine Division Gabriel Gabo Ignacio, Codename Vex Inez Alvarez, Codename Comet Gwen Cabral, Codename Tsunami Mina C, Codename Typhoon Majority of the following documents are taken from the private journals and organizational reports written and compiled by Elder Knight Gabriel Gabo Ignacio, codename VEX, of Team 3, Squad 10, Company 7, from the Philippine Division, as stated by High Command. May 3, 2013 to this day, I still have no idea why Control and Command places so much value on my personal accounts over that of my teammates. I often get the sinking feeling that they will use my journal entries and reports for either public consumption or pass them on to the next Elder Knight if something were to happen to me. I could accept the latter, to be honest, as the life of an Elder Knight is both difficult and dangerous. However, it is the former that I often worries me as I don't want my relatives, let alone the rest of the world, to know about my personal interests, opinions, and issues. In fact, I'm one of those people who is happy knowing that the world knows almost nothing about me. It's a safer way to live considering that I am now an Elder Knight. I do have social media accounts on Facebook and Skype, but those are just holdovers from my old life before I accepted the responsibilities of the knighthood. I post memes every now and again and comment on old friends' posts to keep up appearances and maintain contact with the rest of my family. But enough about me. This is probably the 10th mission I've participated in since I was initiated into the Elder Knighthood and changed to suit its purposes. I type this report now as I sit in my room, thinking back to everything that happened and if there was any other way things could have played out differently. I suppose that is the purpose of typing reports anyway. So you can find out where you screwed up and do better next time. Anyway, this all started when the dead body of a child, which I will designate with the name Totoy, was found near the borders of the town of Santa Messina. The boy had no identification of any kind on him and, based on the dirty clothing he wore, it can be assumed to be one of the many homeless children roaming the town. He was discovered by a family that was traveling to the nearby city of San Mateo from Fortaleza, nearly dead from numerous lethal wounds. The father of the family, whose name I will not reveal here, said he saw the child limping in a nearby field, covered in his own blood before collapsing from his injuries. The child, male, bald, and clearly emaciated, was probably around 12 years of age. He bore multiple fatal wounds all distributed across his body. Based on the observations of local coroners and our very own examiners in the Elder Knighthood, Totoy appears to have died due to a particularly brutal animal attack. Based on the number of his injuries, one can surmise that there were probably multiple animals involved in the attack. Local authorities are baffled over the nature of Totoy's injuries as they appear to have been caused by several different kinds of animals. Animals that can't be found in the Philippines and are unlikely to come together for any reason unless the boy was in some kind of zoo. There were the bite marks and clawing of what could best be described as a wolf on Totoy. 
but there were also signs that he was gored, kicked, and trampled by a goat several times. Whatever the case, based on the evidence and the testament of the family that found him, Totoy had died in both immense suffering and naked terror. Now normally, the elder knighthood doesn't deal with issues like these, even if we actually want to. There are only so many of us, and those that are around have to continue our silent war with other eldritch entities. But due to the nature of Totoy's wounds, and a few details he revealed before he died, the knighthood cannot help but take note. The mother of the family, while in tears, described to authorities and hidden agents of the knighthood Totoy's dying moments. According to her, the homeless boy was too scared to take note of the seriousness of his wounds. He kept talking about being attacked by aswangs, monsters of Philippine folklore often equated with vampires, werewolves, and other shape-shifting horrors in Western cultures. He said that the aswangs came for him and his friends, and they had dismembered and devoured all of them. Totoy had been lucky to have escaped, but they had hurt him badly before he could flee from them. The mother even asked who could do such horrible things to a child. Well, the elder knighthood probably has a good idea, and that's why Command decided to send Team 3, codenamed Scrambled Eggs, to the town of Santa Messina. That means me, Inez, Gwen, and Mina were in for another long week. While I'm at it, I might as well go over some of the details of my teammates. Inez was originally a soldier from the armed forces of the Philippines. He got recruited by the Elder Knighthood when she and her squad at the time encountered worshippers of Eldritch Entity S2, better known as the Key and the Gate and also known as Yog so thoth in Leyte. Since the cultists were better armed than her unit and had access to sorcery, her unit was wiped out and she would have been killed too if a team of Elder Knights hadn't arrived on the scene. She has since joined the knighthood and become an Elder Knight herself shortly afterwards. Inez Alvarez is quite a tall woman, standing at almost a full six feet and has a slightly dark complexion. She also has an athletic build that borders on being muscular. While being an Elder Knight grants a large number of boons including physical conditioning, Inez works out as often as she can and is constantly testing her strength. She has long straight hair and bangs that she ties into a bun when she needs to get serious. Gwen was a coroner from Cebu who came face to face with Eldritch Entities B10, better known as Deep Ones, when she was on vacation in Boracay. She and her companions at the time were captured but were fortunate enough to be rescued by forces of the Global Protectorate, another anti-Eldritch paramilitary organization like the Knighthood but with only limited access to the kind of power we can draw upon. After doing research of her own, Gwen found out about the Elder Knighthood and decided to join us. Much like the rest of the team, she only became an Elder Knight fairly recently. Gwen Cabral is just about my height at 5 feet and 6 inches, making her about an inch taller than I am. She is quite the nerd and prefers to read a lot of books written by J.K. Rowling and Stephanie Mayer. And before you ask, while I might be a bookworm myself, I would never be caught dead reading the books of the latter. Gwen can be best identified by her pixie cut, Hispanic paleness and features, and thick lens glasses that she doesn't really need anymore but keeps up for appearances. Mina was once a cop somewhere in the city of Manila. She discovered the even darker parts of the world when she decided to confront the eldritch entity that was ruthlessly killing homeless people in the city. She almost died facing down one of the many servants of A9, also known as the Windwalker and better known as Ithaqua, but not without making sure that her enemy was dead first. She was soon rescued by the Elder Knighthood, but at first at least, she refused the honor of becoming an Elder Knight, and at first simply worked as one of the Knighthood's many informants and operatives. She only decided to accept the mantle of an Elder Knight when she resigned from being a police officer and started her own business as a private detective. Again, a recent addition to the Knighthood. Mina C is also taller than I am at 5 feet and 8 inches. Much like Inez, she tends to work out a lot but also likes to read and exercise her mind with puzzles. She is also quite the expert with firearms and, after inheriting her father's house in Fortaleza, she's got quite a large collection of guns. I usually identify her through her bob hairstyle, Asian eyes and complexion, and her talent for sarcasm. Then there's me, Gabriel Ignacio. Although just about everyone else, including my teammates, usually just call me Gabo. 
Anyway, I used to be a librarian in Olongapo City and I first came into contact with the enemies of mankind when a group of foreign cultists broke into the public library to steal a tome I had taken pains to hide. It's actually a long story how I came into possession of that book and it has a lot to do with my predecessor and I doubt all of it will fit in here. Long story short, they came for the book, I saw them enter the library and followed them inside. Before I could get myself killed, several teams of Elder Knights arrived on the scene and spared me from a grisly death. About a year ago, I underwent the initiation and procedure to become an Elder Knight, and now, I'm one of them. I'm the shortest member of my team at about 5 feet and 5 inches. I'm the shortest member of my team at about 5 feet and 5 inches. I'm the skinny type, but thanks to the boons of being an Elder Knight, my frame is wiry and quite strong, really useful in times of need. Anyway, I see myself as the Bosley to my teammates Charlie's Angels, and I stand out as being the only male member of my team and the least attractive of them. I keep my hair's length to my chin, as was tradition with me and quite a few of my cousins, and I'm probably the most nerdy member of my team. And this, ladies and gentlemen, was what happened. To be continued. So that's it for a teaser slash trailer slash test run of my Text of Kathona YouTube series. I certainly hope you liked this video or at least got interested in how things will go for Gabo and the rest of the Scrambled Eggs team. I've been working on the setting for quite some time now so I hope some of you find my efforts worth the watch. Anyway, if you're interested in my content so far, please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell for notifications. See you all in the next video.